Guitar tips, guitar tips, just the tips, just for you. Guitar tips. Hello and welcome. Welcome to Guitar Tips. My name is Adam Levy, and uh, this is my weekly video blog um, channel on YouTube. Uh, I post a new tip here each and every Friday morning. That's uh, Friday morning here in, uh, I'm in California, so that's Pacific Coast time. They usually go live at 8.30 on Friday mornings, but you may live in some other part of the world and see them at a different time. Um, they're always archived. You can go back. Uh, there's over 60 tip episodes, um, which makes today's tip episode uh, number 62. And we'll get to the tip in a minute, but first I just wanted to mention um, something. This is, uh, I have two acoustic guitars. This is one of them. You may have seen both if you are, oh, you can look out my window. Um, <laughs> If you are a regular subscriber, um, I have another Martin that's a triple O, no, that's an OM18V. It's about 10 years old, really fantastic guitar. And this I just got uh, recently. It is a triple O 17 SM. And I have had really good luck with it. Um, I bought, uh, well, my, my other Martin I used to have a magnetic pickup in it. I used a um, Sunrise Sound Hole pickup, which is a really great sounding pickup, but it's very heavy and tends to keep the, the top of the guitar from vibrating as freely as you might like. Also, I had some pretty bad experiences um, when I took that guitar in, on flights and had to check it in. Um, a couple of times the pickup actually got loose from where it was um, meant to be fixed here and fell inside the guitar and banged around and um, really beat up the, my my OM18 from the inside out. So I decided that maybe a magnetic pickup is not the way forward for me. Uh, so then now my OM has has no pickup and I just use it for you know recording and you know the occasional live gig where you could actually just put a mic on it and that sounds great. That doesn't work in a big uh, you know, if you're playing in a small situation, that's great. Uh, if you're playing with drums or on a big stage, it's it gets harder to just put a mic on a guitar and have it have it read. So, I wanted to get a guitar with um, with a saddle pickup and with something you know not too expensive because I don't know I'm not I just wasn't looking for a, you know an expensive guitar. I bought this guitar. Um, I think there. It's, it was about $1,700 or something like that. So in the acoustic guitar world, I wouldn't say that that's an expensive guitar. And in the Martin world, it's you know definitely not one of their more extravagant models. But um, the point is, I've, I've taken it to recording sessions and had engineers uh, really love how it sounds. And I've used it on a few live gigs and had engineers tell me that it was one of the best sounding acoustic guitars that they've ever heard. And, um, of course, I have to give, you know, fair credit to the guitar. It is a really great guitar. Um, but I think that one of the things uh, that makes this guitar sound good, and, and my other Martin too, is the strings that I've been using uh, as of this year. This is uh, 2015. Uh, I've been using Martin guitar strings on my acoustic guitars for a while, uh, trying some different... Uh, recipes you know there's uh, 80 20 bronze and phosphor bronze and there's you know treated strings and coated strings and all kinds of choices but if you look you may notice that these strings are not very um, yellow or gold or bronze colored um, they are a string that's real similar to something that martin used to make uh, a long time ago <laughs> and they've recently reintroduced uh, they're called retro strings and um, to me they just sound really even they don't sound hyped I think if you uh, were to think about you know sound in a spectrum of frequencies 
some strings really over accentuate uh, some frequencies and, and have dead spots in other frequencies. To me, the ret these, these are the retro strings. Um, they're just very even. Uh, that makes them great for recording. I think that's why engineers love them, is that they don't have to do a lot of EQing or no EQing. You just put a mic on it or plug it in at a, at a gig and it sounds really good. Um, so uh, that's it. And, and I'm excited to say that Martin uh, Strings is now a sponsor of guitar tips so that's pretty exciting but I mean it's very exciting especially since I'm already <laughs> using the strings it's not um, uh, you know some advertiser convincing me to talk about something that I don't really love I really do love these strings I use them uh, these are 12 gauge strings which I think is, is a great uh, set for this guitar they also sound really good on my OM uh, you can get heavier gauges. I think Lawrence Juber has sort of a custom gauge, sort of a light medium set. There's also a Tony Rice signature set. Um, I just use, I don't, there is no Adam Levy signature set. I just use these, um, they're called MM12s, light. And uh, I would encourage you to check them out if you're looking for a cool sound on your steel string guitar. So, um, the tip this week is... I've been thinking about this uh, a couple weeks ago I did a little um, guitar tip talking about Ted Green and <clears throat> you know one thing that Ted really encouraged me to do um, was to practice real music you know he, he could do these amazing stretches with his hands and I, I you know students would ask him oh you know should I practice stuff like that to stretch out my fingers and and Ted I, I you know I would see him at guitar clinics and stuff and he would say no 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 don't don't practice that that's not music um, try and find um, a way to practice the things that you want to practice you know as far as like goal-oriented practicing uh, Ted would encourage me and and anyone else that asked to practice you know making real music so um, that could mean if you if you want to stretch your fingers, um, uh, there's a Chet Atkins did this arrangement of Mr. Sandman, which is a vocal hit in the '50s. He did an instrumental version of it, and it starts out in the intro. It goes. I'm not very warmed up yet this morning, so it's a little clunky. Some of it uh, is tricky because you have your thumb over the neck, and I know that's um, not something everybody does. But moreover, what's interesting to me is some of the stretchy stuff, in it, and it's part of a piece of real music. Um, also, another thing that has some nice stretches in it is uh, Ted did an arrangement of Sleepwalk, the instru another instrumental hit from the 50s. I think I played a little bit of that a few weeks ago. Um, if not, you can you can find that arrangement, but it, online um, it's it's got some of these kind of stretchy chords in it um, if, if if you don't like sleepwalk or mr. Sandman um, you know write an etude write a piece of music even if it's just four bars or eight bars it doesn't have to be a big um, you know full-length piece but but the point is to try and come up with something that's musical while you're practicing something that's technical um, now, of course, you, I'm not saying that you should never practice anything technical. Sometimes, um, you know, you might want to do that. I, I do that. Um, but the, in the big picture of things, make sure that you're balancing the technical stuff with musical stuff. And I would say, at least for my own uh, personal taste, I would tip the balance more towards music than, than technical. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, nobody... The technique is just up to you. it's just on you like you got to take care of your technique in order to achieve what you want to achieve but 
if you're going to work as a guitar player, people are going to be interested in what you do for your musicality, not for your technique. I mean, maybe if you're trying to get a million YouTube you know, hits or something, um, some crazy technique is a good way to do that. But it's not necessarily a good way to, you know, to get people to hire you for their band or to buy your records or whatever. I think mo most people in the world who, who are not guitar players um, are more interested in music than technique. Um, another example, a few years ago, I, I got interested in this little sort of chordal shape. That's a whole step and a fourth, if you want to think of it that way. Right? And I just like the sound of it. And I wondered if, you know, it doesn't have an obvious major or minor quality. It seemed kind of um, a little bit, you know, hard to nail down. And I like that. So I, I wanted to learn more about it. So I wrote a piece of music um, called Sphere of Influence, which is sort of loosely dedicated to Thelonious Monk, the composer. His middle name was Sphere, if you can believe that. That's a pretty incredible middle name. Uh, his whole name is amazing, but, but Sphere. So it's called Sphere of Influence. And so the first few chords are... Uh, um, so the first chord is like a C major 7 with that shape in it. C major 7 flat 5. And then I just move this top down a half step. And this is A7... Flat 5, flat 13, flat 9. So, I'm thinking about that as D7, and then I get away from that shape for a few bars. And now I'm using that shape here as a D flat major 7. So, So it's, um, it's basically the same as the C chord shape that I started with, but up a half step and down an octave. This is, again, the, the interval thing is the focus. Whole step, perfect fourth. And then there's some other intervals. Anyway, you, if you want to look that piece up, um, it's called Sphere of Influence. I recorded it on a record called Buttermilk Channel. Um, anyway, that's just whether you're interested in, in you know chord shapes or um, stretching or finger. If you want to learn finger picking, I would say try and find a cool piece of music that has finger picking in it. Um, if you're trying to learn how to play in an open tuning, learn a tune that uses open tuning. Like if you want to learn open G, uh, learn Honky Tonk Women or Wild Horses or. If you're adventurous, uh, learn Romeo and Juliet by uh, Dire Straits, uh, Mark Knopfler, or, um, you know, and so on. So sometimes I go on really long here. I wanted to keep this one a little shorter. Um, not sure if I made it <laughs> into the shorter uh, category here, but I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up and and say that, you know, this week's guitar tip. And once again, practice real music. Practice real music. Uh, for guitar tips, um, oh, uh, thanks again to the Martin String Company for sponsoring this episode. Uh, now I'll sign off properly. For guitar tips, this is Adam Levy. Um, stay tuned and take good care. <laughs>